Welcome back. I'm talking with Judy Taylor uh, about the suicide of her son, Lucas. He was in contact with an Australian organisation and the coroner, an Australian organisation that offers services to help people plan their own death. That's against the law and the lawmakers are uninterested, apparently, in stopping them. The coroners almost never report their deaths as assisted suicide because that would require some response to the statistics and the alarming frequency with which this is happening. And instead, nothing's happening. So Judy, in the last segment, you told us how Lucas had been traveling, making plans for the future. There was no reason for you to suspect that he was capable or thinking about um, killing himself. Yep. But you, he went missing for a long time. You got communication that that somebody hadn't heard from him and he'd abandoned his luggage for mm. three or four weeks. And then you hacked into his emails out of concern, mm. trying to find clues to his whereabouts and well-being, and, and found that he'd been in contact with Philip Nitschke's Exit International. Tell me how you knew what happened to, to Lucas. How did that all pan out? It panned out in the way that once we realised what was going on, that he was on this website, that he was chatting on this forum because we could access it, um, the types of questions he was asking, um, the types of answers that people were giving, and this is sort of like a peer-to-peer -peer type thing chat line. Thousands of suicidal people. Thousands of suicidal people. All feeding off each other's all feeding depression off each other, yes. and pathologies. Yep, and none of them were talking about a the terrible pain they were in and how that they were at last stage camp, nothing like that. They were just talking about the final act. They were comparing notes. They were saying, what so about this? So it wasn't this? even a what support group for, for uh, commiseration or empathy. It was just... Well, it's a support group. It's a support group for how to kill yourself. Mm. That's what it was. Mm. And so by reading that, not only was it very distressing, it was really quite disgusting to see these people who were talking about it as if they were going on a camping holiday. You know, what do you think? What do you think about this? And then they were opening up threads, you know, dying in Peru, dying in Mexico, dying in the mountains, dying at your workplace. All of these things that you could be discussing. As far as I could see, there was no moderator on it, or perhaps because of ed um, Exit's policy, is it's all just free speech, just say what you like and we're all here for the same reason, and that's to kill yourself. And the, the death industry in the world has a lot to profit from people killing their children, killing their loved ones, or helping people kill themselves. There's, there's no profit from helping people live longer if you're in the death industry. No, that's true. And I'm sure Exit makes quite a lot of money. But they, they make it anyway. sound they make it sound like you're going on a camping trip. Yes. They really they romanticize it. They call it dying with dignity yeah. as if it's romantic and peaceful and dignified. Yes. And also that it's empowering that you have enacted your civil rights to kill yourself. So what happened next? How did you once you were pretty sure that he was Suicidal. Yes. Um, then we informed the police that we were dealing with, um, the federal police, Interpol, DFAT, the embassy in Berlin, and really their interest dropped right off at that point. Wow. And so I had made contact with um, another um, father who had lost his adult daughter in Croatia mm -hmm. a year before, and he was saying to me, um, once you've mentioned suicide, they'll stop looking. Yeah. So I don't know whether they were looking or they, or they weren't. Yeah. But we knew he had a suicidal plan because I'd read all of his posts, 105 of them that he made over that five-month period. So you just had to wait? Yes, yes. We really just had to wait it out to see if he would be found somewhere. You were hoping he'd been in a hospital? Hoping that he would be in a hospital. Um, he actually went to Peru to buy some Nembatol, which is all laid out in the book. Um, it tells you where to go, what shop to go to, uh, what hotels to stay in. You know, they recommended to him, make sure you book a few tours so it doesn't look suspicious. He did all of that. Yep. And wow. then when he was on the forum, he was asking them, 
which are the airports where they won't really check your luggage. And so they, lots of people had opinions wow. about that. They decided that Munich was the one to go to because it's so busy and to do this and do that and how to pack it in your bag. So how to smuggle drugs, really. Mm. And mm. so he followed that all to the T. And when he got back into Germany, he went in through Munich. He was back online that night saying, I've done it. And it was really high fives all around. Wow. So they, then they commended his efforts. Oh, good job. Oh, now we all know. Wow. And so then it was on to the next part. Okay, now I've got the drug. So then he was discussing with other people where. Where's the good place? Yeah. They talked about another Australian called Erin Berg and how that hers was botched. She went to Mexico, ended up in a hospital, um, died horribly. Left so three, much for the dignity. It left three young children. Mm. But no one discussed that. No one said, no, hang on a minute, Erin Berg was only young. She left a baby and toddlers. They just discussed, no, Erin Berg was found by the hotel staff. Never do that. Never go to a hotel room. That's bad. And then so Lucas was saying, well, I'm thinking of going here. And they go, oh, mm, mm, maybe. We'll get back to you on that one. So then they were just feeding off each other. Now we've got to get the perfect spot. They said to him, always, you know, make sure that it looks like you've just died by misadventure. You know, take some cigarettes, some alcohol, throw it around like you've had a bit of a party and you've just got drunk, fallen over, hit in your head, hit your head and, and you're dead. They said to Lucas that if you die in a foreign country, there will be no autopsy. Someone else said, oh, yes, I know, I've heard someone that that happened to, because they're all experts, all experts. Um, there will be no autopsy, there will be no police investigation and you'll just be taken to the morgue and your body will be disposed of. All of that was false. Yep. None of that's true. Right. Of course you'd have an autopsy. And they said to him, and uh, Nembatol doesn't show in the autopsy, that that's false as well. Hmm. So all of that led along. He found a, a disused you know, old Soviet park there in Germany, and that's, that's where he went. And, and so, that's where he was found. So he was found by... A gardener. A gardener. Yep. And um, I'm sorry to ask this, but how long had he been in the garden before the gardener found him? Don't know. Six, seven, eight weeks. A couple of months? Yep. A couple of months. It's not a very dignified way to not die. Not at all. Not at all. And if the story about Erin Berg is true, which I'm sure it is, she died a horrible death. She didn't die instantly either. She died an agonising death, which took a week or so. And Even though Philip Nitschke says you take Nembatol, you're dead in a flash. I'm quite sure if I was in your position, I would be coping with, with anger to cover my grief. Oh, absolutely. Because to, to think of the, and I don't even want to rehearse it for you, but you know, the, the lack of dignity which our loved ones are dying with because of these type of organisations. Yep. And he was, he was given death coaching it, from the moment that he joined as if that it's not association. Enough, as if it's not enough to fail to treat their pathology, to fail to treat their emotional, psychological soul wounds, to, to fail to provide healing and, or even offer it. No, they don't offer it at all. To, to fail them so badly. They don't even know them. But to then, then to make it such an undignified exceptionally horrible way to end mm. is it's it's not right that we're allowing this no. to happen and to I might also Australians. Add that on that forum they have um, the resident doctor who's called Dr Ted I don't know who Dr Ted is um, obviously that's not his real name might not even be a doctor who knows but uh, you can put questions out there and Dr. Ted will come along and give you some personal medical advice. Lucas did that, asked him about, well, you know, I'm quite a big guy. Uh, you know, should I take this or this or this? Yeah, he was given personal medical advice online. Now, this is a company that's registered in Australia. Wow. It'd be interesting to know where the website's hosted, what kind of jurisdictional authority uh, we've got to monitor it or shut it down. Well, yeah, you can, you can be pretty sure that they would have also thought through that. Yeah. Mm. yeah no. But it is registered in Darwin. The company, yeah. Yep. That's terrible. Well, um, we'll talk more about, uh, about Exit International and the authorities' interest in this in, in the next segment. Thanks for watching. 
If you really enjoyed that video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Have a look at this great video next and check out the website for even more interesting articles and episodes later.